4th of July weekend, 2017. It was on this day that there would be no mistaking it for anything other than anomalous. No less than 231 park attendees lost their lives that Sunday. Oh, sorry there, Mr. Happy Hippo. Notable instances of anomalous deaths include a young couple that, after riding through the tunnel of love, became fused together. A horrible mishmash of flesh and bone. Their organs were unable to sustain both bodies and they promptly died. The autopsy of their bodies discovered no obvious mechanism as to how they were fused. Writers of the thriller Chiller were all decapitated by blunt force. Witnesses report that the deaths did not occur simultaneously, but in groups of two starting with the front row of seats and ending with the back. Forensic analysis indicate that each set of deaths corresponded to a loop or turn in the roller coaster's tracks. One park goer was able to dislodge themselves from their harness and escape from the out of control ride. Unfortunately, they could not fly. On the Ferris wheel, a motor went into overdrive, increasing the speed to its top limit and beyond. These dangerous speeds flung passengers to their doom. It then came to a complete and sudden stop. The whiplash killed many passengers, with only a minimal amount of people surviving the ordeal. These survivors had to be extracted from their cabins by MTF personnel. At the water slide, several individuals went down but never came out the other side. Their bodies were found inside, in a condition that resembled ground beef. MTF teams were able to retrieve DNA samples that were then matched to missing park attendees. This process is still ongoing. Perhaps most strangely of all is the case of the park's clown. Seemingly without reason, the clown is said to have inflated themselves and drifted off into the sky. The only eyewitness being one young boy. This account has been called into question as maybe an exaggeration by the child. No body of a clown has been found, indicating there may be some truth to this account. One individual was found dismembered inside the House of Mirrors attraction. Their left arm was found 16 feet to the north from the torso. Several other victims were found within the House of Mirrors, presumably also the victims of Subject 79. After Foundation personnel were alerted by agents and local law enforcement, Mobile Task Force Row 71 Origami Toads was sent into the site to assess the situation and carry out containment procedures. In the Howling Temple of the Black Moon's Light, Five brave fools came in the night. The first gave flesh. The second gave stone. The third gave the power to move one alone. The fourth gave life and the power to think. The fifth gave nothing, for he paused and he blinked. are starting to burn again. I need to blink. Clear. Clear. Randall is still cleaning. Will is to my right. I want to turn and check up on him, but... Yeah. That thing. 
It's just spray paint, right? The eyes. All right, bring it in. Keep your eyes open. We have no idea what we're walking into. As they explored the freshly abandoned amusement park, trying to discover who or what was behind these violent deaths, soldiers began to inflict harm upon themselves in graphic and frankly horrible ways. All units engage protocol AIOTA. Get those ears covered, boys. Jesus. Additionally, Subject 79 was reported to have caused multiple deaths within the same time frame. It is unknown if the individual in the happy hippo suit is cognizant to their actions or not. We need to get the hell out of here. Full retreat. Full retreat. Carry your comrades out. No one gets left behind. After losing over 50% of its personnel, the Origami Toads withdrew their forces. Containment protocol was switched from retrieval to on-site securement. Standard media blackout procedures were carried out, including a cover story in which toxic corn dogs resulted in the deaths of 253 people. Site Director Zogamak submitting for 05 approval destruction of SCP-823. Requesting immediate action from MTF New 7 to bomb the site from orbit and eradicate this highly dangerous SCP. The reasons for this should be obvious. With no clear way to contain the SCP or discover its origin, I believe we should eliminate it to be safe. The civilian population is far too close to the site for this to be safe. And there would be no acceptable cover story for this. It is too brazen and too bold. In addition, there's much we can learn from this SCP. The potential for discovery is limitless. Your proposal is denied, Director Zolgamax. Continued containment will be our primary method of dealing with this SCP. I must protest this decision. Noted. SCP-823 is to be secured by no fewer than six on-site personnel until such time as decontamination protocols can be established and the artifact in question neutralized. Personnel must respect the safe zone around the current established red zone at all costs. Any individual, civilian or not, who enters the established red zone is to be terminated immediately by sniper fire. Should music or piping be heard emanating from within the red zone, Foundation personnel on site are to immediately don protective earplugs and withdraw from their secondary perimeter, and inform Foundation scientific personnel immediately. Following the realignment event, Foundation science personnel will survey the area and determine the boundaries of the new red and yellow zones, using procedure 823-1-alpha. Due to the necessity of maintaining auditory alertness, no personal music devices or radios aside from And how are you feeling today, D1492? Uh, swell. Snowy and I are becoming fast friends. Did you just call it... Snowy? Yeah, he likes it. Fascinating. Snowy is its name. Truly riveting. I don't feel any different. My back is kind of stiff, but that's it. Why do you flappers ask? Did you just call us... flappers? Oh, uh, sorry. What's a flapper? A dancer from the 20s. The D-Class is clearly looking older. But he wasn't alive back then. It must be the mouse. <laughs> Alright, let's get this over with. I've got a few more winks to be had. Why is the D-Class wearing... that? D-1492? What are you wearing? Why, I sleep in a nightgown every night. It's not strange. I didn't say it was strange. Just like his memories, the SCP must be altering his wardrobe as well. How much more do you think it will affect the D-Class? Only one way to find out. Come on, Snowy. Get on up. <laughs> that tickles you, little miscreant. What did you call me? D-1492. It is your designation, or is it not? My name is Diana. Snow and I don't like your tone, young lady. Did he just say Diana? How old are you, Diana? Sixty-seven. But as you can see, I don't look a day over fifty. You know why? Phalem gum. Keeps your jaw strong and your skin tight. He's lost it. 
We should end the experiment. That is your call to make, Riley. <laughs> oh, excuse me. That is not ladylike. The last test on him showed advanced lung deterioration. We need to stop. So be it. Testing was prematurely concluded when D-1492 began to repeatedly feel unwell and develop symptoms of severe chronic illness. SCP-3927 was returned to its usual containment, with its record player running continuously.